Hello and welcome to Ask Your Academic. Today's session will cover the MSc in Digital Cancer Technologies and we're joined by uh, some of our academics that are working on that programme. So um, we'll ask some questions to them and you can use the chat box to ask any other questions you have. If you've got any questions specific to your application, um, I'll pop some useful links into the chat box for those. If after the session you have any further questions, you can contact the programme administration team and they'll get back to you. We're also recording this session so that will be made available to you after today. And so we only have a short time, so if it's all right, we'll introduce, get our panel to introduce themselves and maybe tell us a bit about how they're involved in the programme and give a brief overview of the programme. Joanne, do you want to go first? Hello everyone. So my name is Professor Joanne Edwards and I'm the Professor of Translational Cancer Pathology here in the University of Glasgow. Um, I have quite a large research team that investigates the role of biomarkers and solid tumours and we use a variety of different technologies such as chromogenic IHC, multiplex immunofluorescence and um, and omic technologies such as genomics and transcriptomics. And more recently, we're um, entering into the field of digital spatial profiling, doing spatial transcriptomics. So a lot of the teams that we use here in Glasgow and within my um, team for research will be part of what we're teaching as part of this programme of work. Um, and I'm one of the directors of this new Digital Cancer Technologies programme. Hello, so I'm Professor Helen Whedon. So I'm a group leader in the School of Cancer Sciences. And my expertise is leukemia research and on modelling the bone marrow niche. Um, so my work focuses on looking at leukemic stem cells and how they evade chemotherapy treatments. Um, I work quite closely with the engineering department um, and we use sort of high tech sort of microfluidic devices for modeling the niche. Um, we also do quite a lot of transcriptomic sort of analysis as well. Um, I'm heavily involved in the education in our school and with Laura and Joanne, I've helped set up this course. And I'm Dr. Laura Richmond. I'm a lecturer within the School of Cancer Sciences um, and I'm also the postgraduate teaching lead for the School of Cancer Sciences. So I'm one of the one of your sort of first points of contact for all of our, our postgraduate taught students. Um, and as Helen said, the, have helped out with the, the design and creation and setting up of, of this new programme. I should probably also have said I'm the director of education for the School of Cancer Sciences. And I'm the deputy director. <laughs> Joanne, did you say that you had a presentation that you wanted to share? Yeah, it's, it's just what one slide yeah. to um, help explain the structure of the programme. Can you see a PowerPoint slide entitled? Yeah. Um, so the Digital Cancer Technologies Programme will um, have two semesters of top components and then over the summer semester of a research project. So um, this program will start with a 20 credit um, course in the hallmarks of cancer and this course is really designed to equip you with the background biology um, that you need to understand the, the rest of the course and it will focus around um, the different hallmarks and cancer, oncogenes, tumour suppressor genes, signal transduction pathways. So it will really provide the background cancer knowledge that you require for the rest of the course. We then go on to a course called Basic Pathology and Pathological Techniques, which will introduce you to the histology of many different cancers and teach you about how to identify a tumour cell, an immune cell, a fibroblast when examining a, a tumour via a microscope. And we'll also, um, this course will have a wet lab component where you'll be taught key techniques 
that are required for pathology such as staining for an HDE and performing um, IHC. Well, then in the last course of the first semester will be um, digital pathology in the image analysis. And this will be when you're actually looking at the different tumours, learning how to um, perform digital pathology analysis using um, different um, digital pathology platforms. So you'll be introduced to a range of digital pathology platforms. And then during your tutorial sessions, you'll be given the chance to use um, QPath digital pathology platform your, your, yourself and assess some of the tumours. We'll then move into semester two, where you get an introduction into omics and how to use R. So you'll be able to interpret some of the mutational and the transcriptomic data that you'll be exposed to later in the course. We'll then go into emerging cancer technologies, which will tell you about some of the really new, exciting technologies that's available in cancer research, including spatial transcriptomics, different platforms for, for drug screening, et cetera. And this course is also in collaboration with industrial partners. And during this course, you'll get the opportunity to go to um, one of our industrial partners, Oracle Bio, and see around their establishments, as well as been taught by different industrial partners in that course. Then we have a artificial intelligence and cancer research course, and this will um, focus around how you can use artificial intelligence to look at H and E slides or you know histochemical chemistry slides, but also how you can use um, artificial intelligence to interrogate your actual data and integrate different large data sets. We then move on to the section where you'll get introduced to a project supervisor and you'll get the opportunity to meet that project supervisor and discuss a project design and learn how you actually design a research project, followed by in semester three, um, you'll actually have the opportunity to do a research project as part of a research team. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the course. However, more information for each of these individual courses is available on the website for this master's and it also outlines for each course the modes of assessment that will be used. Thank you. Um, what a question we're always asked by students is more about the project. So can you sort of tell us a wee bit more about how students pick their title and if they're assigned a supervisor or do they pick their supervisor? So um, we'll use the graduate school portal so uh, everyone that's interested in providing a project for this master's programme will submit the title and a sort of short description of, of the project on the portal. The students will then um, see these range of projects and be able to pick their top three choices, Helen. Yeah. Yeah, pick their top three choices and then we'll make every effort to align a student with one of the choices they've made. The majority of the projects will be submitted by people that are already teach in the master's programme so they'll probably have met the supervisors that they've got the opportunity to do projects with throughout semester one and semester two. Is there any other points that I've missed Helen? No I think you covered it. Thank you. And, and whereabouts will those various courses take place? Is it on main campus or will they be in uh, different areas? So they'll all be at the Garskew per state. So the School of Cancer Sciences has a sort of seminar room up there. So all our teaching is done on site because obviously all the lecturers and clinical staff are based up there. And I think there'll be the exception of the wet lab component, Laura's. Yeah, so the, that'll be the one The one exception to the, the rule will be that the wet lab component um, will like, be held on the main campus. 
Will the omics course be held down there as well, Laura? Uh, the omics course is held online. It's online, so that's fine. Um, and is there anything that students can do to prepare for starting their masters in September? Any uh, we're always asked, is there any sort of reading that we can do beforehand? Um, so that th this masters won't be taught from textbooks, so there'll be reading material provided in the, the form of um, ma manus published manuscripts. But we do have a MOOC available. Um, an online resource to introduce um, students into the basic background knowledge that they might need for understanding cancer um, molecular biology. So, so we could share that with students that are interested, and it also might be quite useful useful for them to. Um, have a Google search on the internet and to start familiarising themselves with what an H and E and IHC and things like that are. Sorry, Hill, were you going to add something in there? No. No, I mean I think you know just a you can look on PubMed and have a look at some sort of review articles on cancer as well, some of the hallmarks of cancer, just to start getting your you know a bit more familiar with the terminology and. Some of the concepts like oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes and all those types of things, just so that when you start, you're, you're a little bit more up to speed as to some of the terminology which will be used during the first course. And it's just worth noting on that topic as well that for access to journal articles and things, as soon as students are set up with their GUID, then they can access a whole host of journal articles using their, their GUID login. Perfect. Um, and in terms of a class time, can you give uh, an idea of like how long is spent in classes versus what's expected to happen in the student's own time? I can take that one if you want. Yes. Yeah. Um, so generally we would expect, um, and this is this is a, a broad rule for most of the courses, that for every hour of class time, um, that you're doing about four hours of work in total. So there's a, obviously at master's level, there's a huge emphasis on, on independent learning. Um, so your your learning doesn't stop when you sort of leave the the seminar room, um, and we expect, as I said, about four hours of learning for every hour of class time. And I just like to say, like the assignments will be set right at the beginning of each of the courses, so you'll know what your assignments are, and there'll be detailed instructions as to what you need to do. And normally we will run a sort of informative question and answer session, so that you're you're clear as to what, what's expected of you, but we expect students to be working at, on their assignments from you know the start of each of the courses. And there's ample time embedded within you know the time period for you to actually be able to complete it and submit it in time. And we also run um, at the end of each block, block and topics consolidation tutorials to give the students the opportunity to come and ask and um, anything that's been a bit unclear during the lecture series and to sort of cement any, any knowledge that require. And we, for, for the assessments, we have a, a wide range of assessments. There's no traditional exams as such in this master's course, but the assessments are all outlined on the master's website at the moment. But for example, the hallmarks of cancer, um, the, the first course, it's the students design a poster on a hallmark of cancer, they present that poster, and then they have short answer questions based on a case study. So they, we, we try and vary the assessments throughout the master's programme so that if students have different skill sets, they're, they're able to um, demonstrate them. Yeah, it is set up so that you're doing a, a variety of different assignments so that you're actually getting key skills to become a, a researcher at the end. So like Joanne said, each course will have a different assignment. So some of them will be more practical based where you'd be writing lab reports and analysing data. Others might be critical reviews of sort of scientific um, technique or a, a scientific paper. There will also be sort of structured essays, posters. So, so we do vary it so that by the end of, 
of the actual master's course. You've got core skills that you'll need, you know, to continue like in a research field. Thank you. Um, and what sort of jobs might graduates of the programme go on to do? Well, we really hope that this programme will provide a foundation for careers in um, a variety of computational biology and informatic fields um, to equip students for jobs in industry and academic settings, as well as, for example, they could go into a biomedical science role within the NHS. Um, the training throughout the programme um, and during the research project will give the students both the theoretical and the practical skills required for industrial, academic or NHS healthcare settings. Um, and we, we do have close links with the NHS and industrial partners to allow students to understand what these different roles out with academia, what different jobs they can apply for. Um, and ultimately, we think this will give them a really excellent grounding if they want to go in and do a PhD and do some um, postdoctoral studies as well. So we're, we're trying to equip them for industrial healthcare and academic settings within um, the cancer arena. Thank you. And we do have a number of research facilities um, as part of the University of Glasgow. Will students get the opportunity to sort of go to those and visit those? Yes. Um, so we have in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, the um, Glasgow Research Tissue Facility and the other person that um, is running this course with us that can't be here today, Dr Jennifer Hay, she runs that facility, so students will have an opportunity to go around that, that facility and um, they'll be here at the Royal Small Cancer Research Centre, they'll go to lectures in the International Resound, CRUK Beetson Institute, so yeah, they'll, they'll get exposed to a variety of different centres during the programme. I'm just looking here. Um, with the project, will students have the opportunity to maybe get involved in any research that's going on within the School of Cancer Sciences? Um, will they be able to go to the seminar series, which I run twice a week? Um, so yes, I mean, be able to attend um, seminars from external speakers and internal speakers as well. Um, a lot of the lecturers are actually, you know, researchers, so they'll be telling them about their research. So, yeah, there is opportunity to interact with the total sort of research environment. And obviously, when they do their project, they'll be embedded within a research group. So they'll be attending all the sort of lab meetings and, you know, within the group, which will be sort of PhD students, postdocs, and obviously the PI as well. Great, thank you. Um, that's actually my list of questions um, that I've got here. I don't know, is there anything that's maybe not been mentioned that you think is important to highlight or anything that you think would just be worth adding? I, I, I think one of the main things about this course is because we want to keep it to quite a, a small group of students, the students will have the opportunity to really get to know us and the other lecturers within the course and get hands-on experience with these different digital cancer technologies, which is not always possible if you're in a master's course of, say, 100 students. I, I think that's the particular unique selling point of this course. That's great. Um, I think that, that was a, a lot of information there in quite a short space of time. So thanks very much all of you for taking time out of your busy day. Um, as I said, if you have any further questions after um, watching this session, please do send those to the programme administration team and they'll get back to you. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, we see you all in September to start uh, the programme. And thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.